Hello there everyone to Equestria War. I'm your host, of course, Mr. Mocha Leopard. At this point in episode 7 of the revolutionary North Zebrica uh, campaign. But the bomber of the future. There's no question that revolutionary North Zebrica requires strategic bombers. Such weapons are, of course, the only method of reliably delivering strategic nuclear weapons despite the promises of ICBMs continuing to grow, but there are uh, three competing proposals before the General Secretary's desk, and only one, of course, can be chosen. The first proposal laid out by the old Air Force General suggests strongly incentivizing the growth of strategic bombers through major research grants. These would largely stick to established wisdom and not risk any real major changes. The second proposal offers experimental improvements to designs focused around achieving more lift with bigger bomb bays at a greater range. Terrafin has assigned his name to this project, believing it's likely to succeed and will prove highly valuable. The third proposal argues that the enemy interception technology is too advanced and a totally new design has required a stab into the heart of the enemy airspace. By flying higher than enemy interceptors can reach at Mach 3, it'll be able to deliver nuclear payloads with safety anywhere. So-called deep penetration bomb would likely prove massively expensive and fuel-hungry, but proponents argue that costs are well worth it. Conventional designs? Do better than a com contemporaries. Deep penetration bomber. Oh yeah. Um, but the thermonuclear arsenal. One weapon does not make an arsenal. Even as we prepare for what may be the final showdown between the greatest powers of the world, we must continue stockpiling more and more weaponry. Only when our atomic superiority is unquestioned will our ability to bring and keep peace will be guaranteed. Also, if you can't tell, oh, we did do warplane hydrogen. So we're not at the end of last episode, but the well, end of episode 5. But prepare the people. This war is likely to go and wipe out a large swath of sapient life. It would be incalculably destructive. But it must be done because if it's not done, then the imperialists will keep the world as it is now, in its endless cycles of chaos and conquest. We'll weep for every life we must take. But we soldier on because the alternative is too awful to consider. Absolutely. I didn't realize when I went to war with the Duchy of Maratonia that we go to war with Esletonia as well, so that's why we're not looking super fantastico right here. Ah, but it is what it is. Um, would you guys like to go there too? You probably would, I have a feeling. Nice. There you go. Oh, we got him anyways. Nice. I figured you might as well take this little snippet out just because... Why not? And go ahead. So we look pretty good over here. Then we'll take out the talent guys. I might just leave these guys alone. I don't want to do a full campaign conquest because I, I, oh god, that is a lot. Infantry's moving in there. Tanks are doing pretty darn okay. Got infantry down here too. Let the tanks roll on out. Let's go here. Recon Company six, and I guess signals. Even though we're probably not going to even use them. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh, so destructive. I love it. Absolutely love it. One of my absolute favorite things. Zarmage. Also, I did uh, include the mod, Fast Justification, just because at this point, um, there's no point to just wait 65 days to take these guys out. I don't understand that. So, with everything going on, I think that was the appropriate change. Alright, so you guys, come on all the way over here. Supplies are probably going to be a problem. We probably can't enable invade. So that being said, Republic Casa might exactly be what we need. Quite literally. Um, just shove everyone together. I don't really care anymore. Um, if we can enable invade somewhere here, that'd be for the best. Now, is that possible? Maybe. Those uh, adjacent aisles, we possibly can. With the floating harbor, sure. There we go. If we can land, land there, that'd be fantastic. In the meantime, we're still building up a lot of uh, more stuff around here. Uh, we're definitely going to need some more supply and whatnot. Ah, the war yet to come, as we prepare the people. Nice. 
Comrades, today I'd like to address the great struggles that lay ahead. Our task, the task history is assigned to us, is a global liberation. As Posada spoke, her words came through millions of radio sets across the revolutionary nor uh, North Zebrica. The broadcast to the audience represented over half the state's population. There were certain living rooms where families gathered to listen as they counted the ration cards. I echoed through the factories where workers put in overtime to keep up with increased production quotas. It was played in barracks and on warships where soldiers and sailors listened in their bunks as they recovered from intense training exercises. Creatures of every race and every walk of life listened, and their thoughts were just as diverse as they were. Some were angry, some were, others were afraid, a few were excited, even jubilant. Many were cautiously optimistic and deeply uneasy at the time. But uh, they all had one thing in common. They were all working towards the same goal. There was a unity of purpose among the people that hadn't been there in a long time. No matter how they felt about global liberation, they were all in this together. They were going to make many sacrifices, not for Posada or for communism, but for each other and for suffering creatures everywhere. For the dreams of the revolution to be realized, they all must fight this war, and all of them were ready to fight until the end. No matter what hardships we face, we'll carry on. We must always keep uh, in our mind a goal, a world free of reaction, exploitation, and fear. This is our most sacred duty. And we cannot waver or turn back. When the war comes, we'll be ready. Glory to the ones who go forward, to the bright future. All the way through. You guys, we're going to be finding one thick. A new kingdom in the north. Oh, look at that. We're going to this. Please go ahead. Thick kingdom. A million soldiers. Tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff here. Um, cast and fighters. Yes, please. It just takes a god awful amount of time to actually get all this stuff done. And get these guys actually over there. Huh. Ooh, Hueys. That's kinda cool. And honestly, with it being taking so long, it just gives us more time to build more stuff up here too. Ah, nuclear cr uh, cruise nuclear engines. Yes. Cruisers. Battleships are nice. Anything else over here? Not too much, no. Do that we are only on extensive conscription, and then a future for all of us. Um, which one do I want to read next? Ooh, that's not bad. Intercontinental ballistic missiles. Well, the potential of ballistic missiles is astounding. With a push of a single button, a volley of explosives can be delivered by a computer to any point on the globe. Short range and even long range ballistic missiles aren't enough. We need ICBMs. Slipping the chains of gravity. <clears throat> for the button was pressed. No one's questioned if it even would work. Would the rocket explode at the launch pad? Would it detonate in flight? Would it go off course? Then the fire. A god of screaming flame erupted from the four engines of the rocket, flying higher and higher in the dimming sky. The roar was deafening, but even more powerful was the soaring feeling in the hearts of the scientists who designed it and the workers who built it. Hippogriffia was a good place for rocket launches. Near the equator, with plenty of uninhabited small islands to build on. But this was something else. The Redstone Orbital Rocket reentry rocket was a success and soon probably within a decade would be able to carry up a satellite in orbit the name for the future object already been chosen proletarian one Poseidon received the news with a huge smile did you hear sky star as of now we're no longer terrestrial civilization there's a star beckons to us stars sky star uh, giggle i think you're getting a little ahead of yourself Poseidon. we haven't even put a creature in space yet not yet Poseidon made it but soon to the stars and preparing for the collapse uh the fact of the matter is that in our bold aims we run the risk of collapsing entirely should this come to pass we must be ready to rebuild the cause of international communism cannot be ended by the fall of one revolutionary state nice i think we're ready so let's justify nice I don't think we'll have any planes that can reach over there, but whatever. We're suffering attrition? Not too much, actually. That's kind of cool. They do have quite a few divisions on the front line, though. Do they have any bases? Supply bases? Ooh. There is an open hole here, which is not ideal. Oh, but that's not even us. That's not even them, so. Ooh, there is an open hole here, though. I'm going to have them go do this real quick first. Uh, do that. There you go. Get down there first real quick. There you go. Oh, we need a lot more steel. Holy cow. Transport copters, huh?
Let's get some of the soldiers down there first. We're almost done building another supply base down here, which is good. 39 nukes. Island silos, huh? Remote islands make for the perfect place to put rocket sites closer to our enemies and comfortably far from our home. They make both an appealing target for the forces of imperialism and can serve as a lure to draw them to us. Alright, let's see what happens. They immediately start attacking us. We're all serious trains. Railway guns. Oh, we're losing here, huh? It's first. Sure, guys. Calcities, that's insane. How high the calcities list is just being racked up right now. My god. 2,000 versus a quarter million, almost. Jesus Christ. Oh, is this? Add transport helicopters to logistic companies? 10 additional transport helicopters. Fuel usage, supply usage goes down. Fuel hospitals. Cow usage go back. Oh, I like that one. As long as I can't beat us, that's all I really care about. Swift drop, huh? Nice. Buckley's. Sure. Fortress battleships. Huey Cobras? Jesus. Oh god, they're eating up our supply. Oh, they're trying to push in too. Well, alright. What type of damage are you doing here? None. We're all over here. We're up here. We're doing. We have a, literally less than half of the total air force, but we're just just destroying their planes like crazy. Oh my god! 30, 8, 40, are those fifty there at one point. Oh my god, that is disgustingly awesome. Two over two million casualties already. Holy crap! Holy Heavenly Fathers. Now get out of there. Emergency bunkers. It's inevitable that we'll face eventually... We'll eventually come into conflict with another nuclear power on that day. Our people must know how to survive bombs. We'll construct blast-proof bunkers throughout the land and drill the populace on how to best use them. Project Fallout. Project Fallout has yielded uh, a successful test. Uh, from now on, our skies will be protected by the nuclear weapons, of course. <clears throat> No, which make them dealing with enemy bomber wings far simpler. We used to have air-to-air -air nuclear rockets to distress many of our pilots, and is now without its drawbacks. Extreme caution needed in deploying such a weapon makes uh, them all but useless in dogfights with other uh, fighter craft. As a weapon must be set to detonate at a predetermined distance, a long way, long range away from the fighter, allowing an agile enemy to change direction easily. The added weight of the nuclear missiles is also straining our fighter engines. Reducing their speed and agility. Still, the enemy's flying fortresses can now be shot down in mass by even our smaller firecraft, so the trade-off is easily worth it in the eyes of the Air Force Command. The reactionaries won't like this one. Nice. Project Starfire. Traditional bombers remain highly vulnerable to uh, fighters and interceptors. To counter this threat and truly become a global power, we will have to uh, <clears throat> uh, design something radically different. Flying far and faster and higher than traditional bombers, a Valkyrie will be virtually vulnerable to conventional anti-aircraft, as well as interceptors. While this may necessitate some compromise in other parts of the design, it will surely prove worthwhile once completed. Oh god, it's going to take us a long time to get down there. We might not actually get down there, though. My god. It's a slaughter. Oh, well, better than them than us.
Nice. We're getting there. Forty-six, forty-two. Okay, we they just lost four divisions and millions of manpower. Wait, are they close to capitulating? No. Absolutely insane. I, I, I imagine the casualties would be just drastically higher when we actually do take out a nation that's actually somewhat more equal to us. I, they're just dead. My God. My good lord. That's insanely awesome. Uh. There, go there, so you can actually connect yourselves all the way through here. And for the funsies. We'll build some more nuclear reactors. There you go. Now, I wonder if we can take these guys out. We've killed off, they have 13 divisions left. My god. That is absolutely insane. Four, six is good. Wow. Definitely light game. Wait, hold on. Medium missile batteries. Light missile batteries. No, oh, can't this one. Oh, okay. So I have to do light missile batteries if we want to do it. Nice. Um, let's get some of this. Yeah, we'll definitely go to nuclear depth charges. Helicopters? Oh, yeah. Why not? Well, this one, two. We have depth charges. We have a little bit of anti air already. Um, torpedoes? Huh, only level two. That's not good. Oh, whatever. These take forever to make, but they're decent. They're actually really good. That was actually pretty easy. How many screens do they have now? <laughs> 49 heavy cruisers and 126 destroyers. I just don't understand the AI, man. I really don't. Just because we can. future for all of us. The future of communism is not merely for some lucky few, nor is it for it to come in infinite time, or indefinite time. We're always building the future, and it's for everyone. Regardless of race, ancestry, or nationality, all are welcome to the bright future of the revolution. Nice. Uh, before we do that. Oh, got five more already, huh? That was fast. Who doesn't have a, a carrier? You don't. You have one. Hold on. God dang it. Come on. For now. Okay, come on. Weird. Very strange. Um. True attack subs. We already have a lot of those. Hmm. 
can try it. Because we can, maybe? How are we doing over here? All we need for them is to land. Nice. Tanaya. War is Tartarus. Beautiful. That worked way better than I, than I thought it would. Alright, so you all have done a fan fantastic job. And having the Marines here do this is probably relatively smart. Oh, another stratocracy, huh? Uh, you might do that. Casualty, 29, plus 6,000. It's kind of expensive when you naval invade, but you know, whatever. Just trading blows back and forth, my god. Come on, we're almost there. Come on, Marines. There we go. So how much manpower do they have? Got quite a bit. Quite a bit. Cool. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, armored cars. Nice, we got a lot of extra tanks. We're gonna need a lot of ports. Huh. Nice. Area defenses. Every enemy bomber shot down is a life saved, and so it will require us, uh, or require massive anti air installations. Radar will also be necessary to accumulate or accurately detect bombers ahead of time, as will modern fighters and intercept them. Uh, our ideal outcome is that our bunkers never need to see us. Yeah, pretty much. 20 days? My god. That is insane. Alright, so here's where we're going to do this. Oh god, they killed off five, uh, five of our divisions? Oh Jesus. Uh, my bad. My bad. Come on, you're gonna get in circle now. Come on. Keep him in place. That's all you need to do.
Come on, make the ports. That's what we need. definitely going to make them pay for all those casualties. I've got the boards in here. It's good. Oh my god, how are you losing? Why can't we use last stand? I do not understand, man. How many beers priority too? Like, bruh. Help that we can't pierce them. Uh, we're probably getting there, I think. Good. I think we're holding them off now. Making the world safe for communism. Reaction, fascism, and imperialism, the most terrible wicked forces in the world. What capitalism is and always be our enemy is those uh, monstrous forms that is the greatest danger of communism. This war is not merely one against evil, it's war for the entire survival of future kind. Nice. Twelve thousand manpower left, which is good. They don't scrape in the barrel. We're almost done defeating them. Yeah, they're completely out of everything. It's very nice. Are they seriously done attacking? I don't believe so. Go here and cut them all off. We need that radar station. I turn a couple more planes. Oh, how do we lose? How do we lose? Well, we're going to need this other army down here. Project Tesla Worm. That's just fine. Let's go through too. Comrade Sheriff, and please report that Project Hazelfin. Uh, Tesla Worm. It's completed its success. Nuclear demolition charges are powerful enough to collapse skyscrapers and loud enough to be carried up no, in the backpack. These are as useful as a specialist tool for infantry's defensive and breakthrough operations, improving urban combat potential and generally being bettering our readiness. However, the greatest use has been found in our combat engineering corps. We look forward for the development of the nuclear battlefield. The Earth shakes at our will. Nice. I have a feeling we try to, like, leave. Uh, it won't be a pretty sight. Let's see.
What if we all relieve? You can probably bait some enemies into attacking us here, maybe? Fourteen days, that's pretty good. Interesting, they're not attacking us. Go ahead and go on in. Towards worldwide peace. Comrades, soldiers, and General Secretary's voice crackled over the radio. Today we begin the final struggle against our forces of reaction. Today we sally forth to break the chains of the oppressed of the world. The transport ship rumbled to life, its mooring lines being unhooked as dozens of jets flew overhead. The Marines within have been training for this operation for years, opening salvo of the greatest war in history. Arise, arise, this should be a long war, a hard war, but it is a sacred war. We fight not for glory, not for profit, not for vanity, but for the liberation of all creatures, to bring a brighter world into being. When you fight, remember that you are fighting with all the people of the revolutionary North Zebrica behind you and that your march is a march of history. The soldiers' shouts and cheers shook the ship's very hull. Wow. So destroy every supremacist regime in the world and finally complete a revolutionary mission and usher in a bright future for all. Cool. And they went immediately. Oh. Um. Of course, we're a bit of overreach, reaching here, but still, that'd be a reasonable to ask. How much does their life cost compared to the results from which the whole world will benefit? Wouldn't that be a fair mistake? Oh, God. Go, 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 go. Do not let them leave. Good. Super heavy battleship pull, huh? As you know, these are totally worth making. Nuclear engines, oh my god. Excuse me. Oh my god, heavy missile batteries? We've got to do that. Helicopters? Oh, that's cool. Oh, we don't have enough. Dang it. Well, we might do that one off screen. I'll see. Early attack QEs? That's cool. Full of a dent. How are we doing down here? Quite well. Full of fragrance. Good, we're pushing on the entire front now. Thank God. Woof! Eber Koenig? There we go. That took us way longer than I thought it would. 21,000 manpower, huh? Because we can. Help them out. Or not. Nice, there you go. That's what we like to see. Oh, beautiful. Better engineers, nice. Maintenance. Even better artillery after this one? Yes, please. Good. 
What's that? Bear climate. Ah! Good, finally. Let's go to the tank center, because it acts as the Griffonian Empire. Holy crap. Take that, can you just capitulate him? You should be able to. In theory. Nice. There we go, that's what I thought. My my apologies for taking so long with that. Alright. This is gonna be one insane battle. Um I'm gonna probably retreat the Marines back because they're probably going to be kind of insane at potentially navy inv navally invading us. Battleship Killer one, huh? So we got that entire page done. I'm gonna come back over here now. There you go. Prism par Parallelescopes or something. Nice. Look at all these rocket silos. I'm gonna take these guys down here for now. What do you mean criticize for work for weak foreign policy? Are you insane? I just want to see what the battle will be like between our two nations. Um, yeah, build. Come on. Nice. Good. Finally. Also, I might just use cons commands for the island nation off here, maybe. No, we don't want that one. Yeah, no, I mean, we might be able to push in. I don't know. We'll see. Now, would we be able to win? I don't know. Let's say first. I have no idea. No clue. And I apologize for taking so long when it saves. We'll probably need to raise the conscription level too. Yeah. And oh my god. There you go. So what if we oh god. Oh, so these guys up here too, that's good. That's fine. Give us a 
couple of days, you know, see what happens, maybe test the waters a little bit. And now they're going to be death stacking, uh, probably a whole bunch over here. Even though, I mean, they probably have a lot of uh, issues with supply, maybe. Hopefully. Battleship killers. Uh, just go with convoys. Just death stacking everything. Ooh. Well, let's see. They immediately begin attacking us. We're losing down here a little bit. Even with forts? Oh boy. Oh, they've lost. F oh my god! The Barony of Ramirez done an impressive job. Oh, they're gonna lose it here, maybe. Wow, you suck. We're doing well uh, pretty much everywhere else, though. Even the uh, ships are doing okay. My god, Rumer. Jesus Christ. That is absolutely nuts. Oh, they're trying to sink your ships, too, huh? beating us through here. How are you losing here? Let's get behind the river for now. I didn't realize how bad it was for them. God, the and our supposed allies, they're guys are sucking up a lot of attrition. It's not good. Okay, look at that. Nice. You guys win here at all? No, don't even try. Just collect debt. By debt, I mean their their lives. How is this? Deploy thermonuclear weapons on the Griffonian Empire. We're opening a Pandora's box we never close. Countdown. I kind of want to see what happens. Oh. Oh, we can't add transport helicopters. Oh, we need more transport helicopters. Sky Star and Posada. Uh, look at how the bomber loaded up. Uh, so we're just going to do this, huh? Ask Sky Star. Posada's wrong in the clouds. Can't we just, uh. I don't know. Thermonuclear weapons. They were originally meant to only as a deterrent, but what good was a deterrent if it wasn't used? RNG, the most powerful weapon in the world, with a single strike, they would cripple the enemy and save countless of their own soldiers' lives. Besides, they committed themselves to liberating the whole world. Wasn't anything worth that? So what will happen, asked Skystar? Well, we don't know for sure. We never used it on a real target before. By our estimations, it'll probably vaporize a large portion of the uh, target, and then start a fire storm. It'll kick up radioactive dust from all the, uh, <clears throat> all the homes. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that. And if it gets in the water, well, then it gets in the water and the soil. It'll cause a radiation poisoning, crop failure, just a lot of bad things all around. We don't know how much of the city will be left, but probably not much. I can... The bomber started down the wrong way, picking up speed. I can still call it off. Maybe we can do with this with just normal weapons. I, I mean, I would probably take hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of our own creatures to accomplish what this bomb will do in an instant, but we we'll to deal with the poison so much innocent blood. So I looked down at her claws, not looking at sky stars or scars itched for the first time in years. She picked up the radio receiver. She could still call it off. The bomber was about to take off. Nah, it's got to be done. The day of the second sun. Oh God, uh, is it in the capital or the Grofonian Empire has been struck by a thermonuclear weapon, turning the capital into a smoking crater. Has it? Um, the weapon vaporized much of the city's sand and then flattened the rest in an instant and consumed the outskirts of a fire from the likes which has never been seen. Emperor Grover the Sixth denounced Posada as a madfish, an enemy of all life, speak, uh, speaking from a bomb ship constructed shortly after the infamous sunset atoll test. Survivors for hundreds of miles say they saw a second sun in the sky, and many of these survivors were left with terrible burns or radiation poisoning. 
Millions are dead already, and it seems that the world's entered a terrifying new age of warfare. They left us with no other choice. Oh my god! Nice. Can't do that again. Oh god. Look at that. Hey, yeah, it's not quite over subs, which sucks. Oh, I hit him even harder if we can. Oh god, look at that. Holy crap. Oh my god. Nice. God dang it, dear Republic, take your soldiers back. I'm causing supply issues here. Holy crap. Still have 2 million manpower. Uh, about a thousand divisions. 338 ships. A million in the skies. I'm gonna have to use commands to delete our allies' divisions. This is kind of insane. Yeah, I, I don't like how many guys they have over here, so... I'll probably... Oh, shh, Nikes. We lost 12 subs, but probably, probably not very good. You guys doing okay over here? What's going on? Nice. Yeah, we got to get rid of them. I want to read this one for so. Stand off. Potential of air launch cruise missiles to strike enemy silos and airbase cannot be overstated. Um, success of the law or strategic bombers essentially acts as mobile missile silos, safe from enemy fire and impossible to counter. Nice. Despite being a plague by setbacks, Project Tank Busters produce a working prototype of a new generation of artillery. For the first time, a rocket artillery units will be able to deploy the unmatched firepower of nuclear warheads. The limited number of these weapons, combined with the inherent con contradiction between the strategic nature of nuclear weapons and the rapidly changing nature of ground warfare, means that actual combat deployment of these weapons will be rare. It's compounded by the appallingly poor design or ac poor accuracy of the design, which is still inaccurate and short range even compared to rock standard rocket artillery. Still, the mere existence of this weapon will give enemies pause, and as enemy enemy armored detachment which crosses open grounds. Or expose itself to being vaporized or also irradiated even through the best of armor, and it could also potentially prove useful against aesthetic fortifications. Not as useful as we hope, but a valuable advantage. Ooh! Project Standoff. Project Standoff was a complete failure, unfortunately. Missile technology is simply not currently advanced enough to make such uh, air launch cruise missiles possible. Perhaps in five or ten years such weapons will be feasible, but for now we just can't get the electronics needed in a package small enough for a plane to carry. While the aim of air launch guided missiles have failed, we've learned valuable lessons about aerodynamics that allow us to design better glide bombs and rocket assisted bombs. This in turn will allow our bombers a small degree of safety from air defenses, or anti air defenses, although it's nowhere near what we had hoped to achieve. Project Bomb Thrower. It's succeeded, although it's been less effective than we hoped. The dedicated grenade launcher does indeed vastly outrange traditional rifle grenades, sharply increasing the firepower of the infantry platoon, but it's near useless in short range. Because of the weight of the M79 grenade launcher, an infantry creature cannot carry it as well as a rifle, so they're basically totally dependent on the comrades for defense. Nevertheless, the ability to fire grenades effectively out of a range of 350 meters cannot be underestimated, and it'll be a valuable boost to the Revolutionary Army. Excellent. Nice. We've got, got some grenade launchers. And we're just beating the crap out of the Griffonian Empire now. We've delivered at least almost 8 million casualties only, though. Project Starfire. Against all the doubts of naysayers, Starfire has succeeded. However, many of the doubts have proven to be well-founded. The XB-70 Valkyrie's bomb bay is smaller than the B-52 Stratofortress and has less range and is far, far more labor-intensive to produce and guzzles fuel like no plane before. The XB-70 will not replace the B-52 nor the B-47, but it will be complemented and serve missions the Stratofortress cannot. We have our deep penetration bomber and our enemies will never be safe behind their interceptors again. A glorious design. Cool. So as you can see, we're taking out the Griffonian Empire. I think it ended with like 18 million casualties. It's kind of insane. Um, 
I might have played this far before, but I think that's everybody taking out that supremacist. I'll, I'll be honest, I just use Comms Commands to take these guys out up here in the north, though, because I just don't, I did not want to invade the River Coalition. Because they're a giant freaking uh, pact up here. And we would have done well. Oh, oh, we're also running out of manpower. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I went back up to service power requirement, which is kind of insane. But I think that's all the supremacist nation in the world. I don't think there's a single nation that's actually supremacist anymore. Um, I'm not sure there's anything else we're supposed to get here. So, as, uh, these guys are like communist, harmonic, non aligned. Um, so, yeah. But I did annex these guys before the war was over. Before the war with the Griffonian Empire was over, so. I think that's gonna be it for us. I, I don't I don't see anything else. So towards worldwide peace. So that was a peaceful ending we did in the last one. Also, we did end up using some transport helicopters, um, and I would like to use them more because that was one of the comments from the last video. You didn't even look at helicopters. Well, I did eventually in this ep in this episode, which was really kind of cool. Uh, let's see, I guess I guess research doesn't really matter at this point anymore. But. Uh, making the best marines, we'll do some of that. Oh, we have one in here. So these guys are scouts? The armor, 30. Look at that. Nice. Crack lightning, huh. The sea knights, oh, that's really cool too. Armor as well. And then huey cobras, attack helicopters. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, these are the transports, and those are scouts, yeah. So, um, so there's that. I, I just feel like I'm missing out on something here, though. Is there any other supremacist nation in the world? I don't think so. Diplomacy? Oh, it's not like the, the whole diplomacy screen where you have with uh, the other nations of the world. So, I think we might just end it there. I'm not sure if we're supposed to get anything else. I mean, Cherubtero is not supremacist, you know, they're religiously socialist. But, uh, can we see... Huh, supremacist. Oh, wait, okay, so there was one more. I You can't even see that on the map. Where are they? Oh, they're over here. Okay, so... Hawkland. So we gotta get all the way over here. Right? My bad. I thought it was over. No, that's not Hawkland. Where are the Ice Dragon tribes? Are they down here? No. Where are they? Uh. Oh god. Well, um, with that, I'm gonna take them out and well, then we'll see what happens after that. Alright, so I figured it out. They're at the bottom of the map. A place I was absolutely like not even looking like if you do this scroll all the way odds are you're not even going to see them So because they're covered up by the generals, which is not really a problem, but I'm glad I looked over the diplomacy screen um, <laughs> To actually see where the supremacists were so a screen I am never never ever 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 used also when I was at war with the, uh, not storm king, but um Before the empire I actually had to use um, Anti-air as well as some anti-tank in my own divisions divisions. I never ever do that. They had so much armor It's not funny um, I did it for the Marines as well, for whatever combo with, but not the tanks. And they actually only take 1.41 supply use when you have maxed out logistic companies. Which is really kind of cool, actually. So, um, something I never do, because my god, that was insane. I just, that was a grindy war, to say the least. Uh, but, we're here, and we're gonna have a good old time. Take three, take two. There you go. Have fun. Pingania, huh? And we sunk five destroyers. And Ping got Pingaya. Pingaya. Yeah. Well, everyone's just kind of hanging out. Also, I gave up on making infantry, and I just doing tanks instead. I love armor. Armor's nice. And are we there? Yep. Come on. And we almost are there. All right. So that should be the last supremacist nation in the world. Nice. So, do, is there any event now that we've done that? Come on, back up here. Um, as you can see, we've pretty much researched almost everything in the, <laughs> the game already. Um, we could use magic weapons for these guys, and we are using tra oh, uh, add more transport helicopters. Kind of cool. Um, we've got a lot of success with exotic weaponry and devices. Oh, complete the revolutionary mission. The emergency government. Poseidon never wanted to rule forever. If you had a plan. At the end of the war, plant hydrogen to lead things in hooves. Claws or fins or some creature fresh-faced and optimistic. To breathe new life into the RWP. To make sure the revolution outlived her when she was gone. Not to mention, she wanted to enjoy the society she'd built, live a normal life after so many hard decisions and sacrifices. 
The day of the second center put an end to that dream. Millions of creatures vaporized in an instant. A mass of smoking creatures blown in the economy, the food system, and the creature lands of the RNZ was now responsible for. Poison waters, radioactive dust spreading far and wide, it was a nightmare. And it was a nightmare that would make it take years to clean up. <clears throat> Despite the fact that the liberated creatures would never forgive them for the second sun, the creatures of the RNZ had stepped up to shoulder the up to shoulder the burden. But Sato was so proud of them. They had agreed to lower their own standard of living in order to provide for the millions of the displaced, the orphan, the poison, the war wounded. <laughs> She was proud of them, but Posada wasn't naive. She knew that they only were willing to accept all these new burdens because she asked them to. Hydrogen, hydrogen and its aftershocks had forced RNZ to become an emergency government, turning away most of its lofties, from its lofty goals and becoming cons concerned first and foremost with averting catastrophe and cleaning up the devastation they had wrought. Without their founder at the helm, it would falter. Masada never wanted to be a dictator and never wanted her own personality to be the only thing holding revolutionary North that were good together. But for the foreseeable future, that was her fate. No rest for the revolutionary. Uh, attempting to post scarcity luxury for all. Um, that's cool. To remove People's Welfare League. Remove the Department of Extra Normal Affairs. <clears throat> remove the Committee for Global Liberation. And so this is the end for Posada. Now I think, is there an, another route for Posada? Like going like completely like the route we did but not blowing up basically Griffenheim? I think there might be. Um, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure because we, 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 we nuked this thing really, really hard. Um, yeah. So I think there might have been another route, but I'm not entirely sure. But I guess that's the route we're going to take for now with uh, Revolution of the I've played this for a week pretty much. Wow, holy cow. It's less I've actually played a campaign for a week. Um, so if you enjoyed the campaign, I guess you know consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Tell me what your uh, thoughts are about this campaign. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow And another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.